So good morning and welcome to another beautifully clear day in Namibia. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to get ready to go out in the morning sky and catch the new Comet C Comet C2023 C3 Shunshin Shan Atlas. So I really hope I'm not butchering that pronunciation. I shall probably just call it the Comet from now on. Now comets are named after their discoverers. And this was discovered at the Chinese Observatory or the Shunxin Shan Observatory. It was also independently discovered at the Atlas Observatory in South Africa. So that's how it gets its name. And so what we're gonna do in this video, I'm gonna get my phone, my binoculars and get the digital camera ready. We're gonna go outside, try and catch the morning comet so it's visible in the morning sky early October. And then I'm gonna give you a brief summary of how to find it in the evening sky later in October. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed for this one. The, the press, the internet rubbish is already calling it the comet of the century. Whether it lives up to be the comet of, well, 2024, or hopefully even October 2024, the comet of October 2024, we'll keep our fingers crossed that everyone gets to enjoy this beautiful comet. So I've actually been following this comet since the spring. The comet was originally crossing it through Virgo. Now you couldn't see it with the naked eye. You can see like it is now, but you could see it in a telescope and I actually tested out my new travel mount, the mount I showed you in the last video. And we actually managed to catch the comet and track it as it moved against the background, sky, background stars. So since then, the comet's been racing towards the sun. It's actually gone past the sun now. And that's why it's visible in the morning sky. We're then going to lose it for a week as it crosses the sun and then it's going to reappear in the evening sky. So there is a space probe that's continuously monitoring the sun. And this is a European Space Agency NASA mission continuously monitoring the sun. And this comet has actually now wandered into the field of view of the camera. So we can actually see the comet as it's going around the sun. So I got my observing accessories. This is the smartphone. So I'll try and take some three second shots with that just handheld. And then I've got my binoculars as well. These are the Lodges binoculars. They're quite nice Conus binoculars. So. I'll try and take some, uh, try and do some visual observing. And then I've got my digital camera and I'll set it up so I can make a time lapse, take a whole load of pictures one after the other and we'll stitch them together and make a video. And that all goes inside my little canvas bag, my little padded bag. And then I've got the lightweight camera, carbon fiber tripod. That's what the camera goes on. And if you want to see more of how I take pictures of the night sky, then go and check out this video here. Very windy day. So as you can see, I did get out this morning and I did manage to find the comet, but oh my goodness, was it windy. It was so windy. None of my audio worked. I had grit and sand blowing everywhere. So it was really hard just to, just to do anything, even just to take the pictures, let alone record a video. So when I was setting up, I've got the carbon fiber tripod, the lightweight uh, carbon fiber tripod, put it on the ground. It was so windy that the wind just blew it over. And luckily I didn't have my camera on at that point. So the rule of thumb, of course, is to grab some rocks. There's some rocks lying around, put them on the canvas tray. That then weighs your tripod down, makes it more stable. So if you are in Africa, really please do check what is underneath the rocks before you pick them up and put them on your tripod. So that does work, but do be careful what's underneath there. Right, so that is the morning sky. That's the observation we made back in the beginning of October. Let's go through to what's gonna happen later in October. Now, the key point here is that the Northern Hemisphere observers are far better placed than us down in the Southern Hemisphere. So you guys are gonna get a much better view of the, of the comet. Now, the comet is actually passing the sun and reaches perihelion on the 27th of September. And that's when it starts swinging around from the morning sky to the evening sky. Now it's technically at its brightest on the 10th of October. Now that doesn't mean that's gonna be easy to see, but it's just at its brightest. And the problem is it is still quite close to the sun. So wait until sunset, make sure you've got a really good view of the Western horizon. If I tell you the views as I would see them if I was back home in the UK, back home in Salisbury, you will see that low down on the horizon just after sunset, you'll hopefully see that long tail. Now I'm assuming of course it's gonna be clear. I can give you predictions what the comet's gonna do. What I can't do is tell you what the weather is going to be like. A couple of days later, if we go forward to the 12th of October, you'll see it separated further from the sun 
technically making it easier to see, but it has faded as well. So it's moving further from the sun, so therefore it's getting slightly dimmer, but it should be higher in the sky, further from the sun and slightly easier to see. If you look low down on the horizon as well, make sure you've got a good clear view, you should be able to see Venus. Venus will appear as a bright star, by far the brightest star in that part of the sky. Well, in all the sky, to be honest with you. But down low, look out for Venus and then look to the right. If we then jump forward a couple of days again to the 14th, you can see again the comets further away again from the sun, technically a bit fainter, but so it should be starting to be easier to see against the twilight sky. Now, as the days go by for later into October, you'll see the comet gets further and further and further away from the sun and fainter and fainter. And that's really the story of it. So try and catch it low down. Make sure it's after sunset. Really, please do be careful, if, particularly if you're using binoculars. Don't look at the sun. Don't point to your binoculars, telescopes, cameras, anywhere near that sun. Now, if we jump to the southern hemisphere where I am for the next few weeks, if you look, the comet is much closer to the horizon. Its path is much flatter. So technically, although it's still the same brightness, it's much harder to see because it's lower down. So I think down here, we are a few days behind you in terms of the comet sort of climbing higher into the sky. But we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that we get to see a bright naked eye comet. So that's how I suggest you go ahead and see it then. Look out after sunset, look towards the western horizon. Make sure the sunset, don't damage your eyes, don't damage your camera. See if you can pick it up either with the naked eye or with a pair of binoculars or try taking a snap with your smartphone. And let us know how you get on. I'd love to see lots of pictures. And thanks once again to the patrons for your support. And thanks once again to And Beyond for hosting me here for these few months.